remember that horse and a half. Mm -hmm. 300 bucks. Nice. And the three horse, I did some horse trading because I had a different engine. I had that big engine that had the, had the uh, shivs on the fly wall. That is, I think, 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't run, but when I got done, it did run. Yeah. But you're so simple, Ray. Days, right? Fa Fall Family Festival. Fall Family Festival. Of the Octagon Barn. Of the Octagon Barn. And we're here in Gagetown, Michigan? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Uh, can you tell me about your engines a little yes, bit? Yes, I may. Okay, the engine right here, folks, is a 1925 Fairbanks Moore Z 6 horsepower. Okay. It runs on gasoline, but it actually can be started on gasoline and it, can, it gets converted to uh, kerosene. Yeah. The engine over there to the left of it was built in 1920. That's a horse and a half Fairbanks Model Z. Yeah. Same thing, just smaller. So these are both Z engines? Yes, they are. What does the Z mean? Uh, the, that's their trademark open crank uh, thro throttle governed. Okay. And the open crank just means you can see the crank right you here? You see all the energy and everything. Okay, perfect. Now the ZC engine they went from open crank to enclosed crankcase. It had an oil pan. Open crank to enclosed crank? Yeah, and it had an oil pan. The engine could be run unattended. Oh, I see. See, these two, you can't walk away from them running. You gotta, you gotta kind of babysit them. Okay, when what? you say babysit, what do you mean? Well, you, you gotta be with them. You know, I could step away to go you know, use the bathroom and stuff, but yeah. you, you don't want to have it run unattended. Okay. Because if you forget to oil it, you could cause problems. If you let if the water boils off, you can overheat the engine, and the overheat they can damage the engine quite easily. Okay, so these need uh, these need fuel, right. and then they need oil, and you have to oil a bunch of points on those. Yeah, there's let me see. There's uh, on this engine here. There is six greasers with yeah. cup grease. There is this is an oiler. This drips in by a pipe on the top of the cylinder. Yeah. And as the piston goes by, it lubricates the rings and the piston. Okay. And that's got a drip oiler. We set it for eight drops a minute. Right. And that's constant loss. Okay. Now, when you say constant loss, that means it runs out. Well, of it just goes all over, yeah. Okay. Now, my horse and I have, I got an old uh, uh, coffee jar, a uh, plastic coffee, coffee jar to catch the drippings. Yeah. Now, this one here, unfortunately, just goes all over. But, uh, I see. Now the, 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 the three horse is quite different. Uh, instead of a standard spark plug ignition, it has a, a igniter. Uh, inside the head, there's a device that has two points. They're connected by linkage. And as, as the engine comes up to top dead center, the points open and that makes a spark. It has low tension ignition system. 
What can, do you mean by tension? Is that okay, instead of a high tension, high voltage mag, it runs basically, you can run it, either run it on a dry cell battery or a bicycle type generator. It does not need, need high voltage to run them. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, all three engines are throttle governed. They are not hit and miss. They hit every time. What's the difference between throttle governed and hit and miss? Okay, hit and miss, the engine starts. It runs, and if it's, and it, it, it runs, and when it comes to speed, a mechanism lifts the exhaust valve off its cam, and it coasts. Okay. It slows down, and when it gets to a certain RPM, the, the mechanism will unlatch the valve, and the engine will fire like a regular engine. Oh, okay. So in a hit and miss engine, you've got a governor, and that governor is opening and closing based on how fast the engine is going. Exactly. And then if it gets too close, then it'll fire and then speed right. up again. Now, when you put a load on that engine, yes, but you put a load on the engine, the engine will will start hitting more often. Right. But the thing with hitting this, uh, 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 other equipment's fine, but if you have to use a generator, it does not have a steady speed. Right. Now these engines, being their throttle governed. They have a very steady speed for power generation because the frequency of your power system depends on the RPM of the engine. Right. And these and, and these engines are quite accurate in the in RPM deviation. They're pretty close. Okay. So. Fun, fun. So a hit and miss engine will be speeding up and slowing down and speeding up and slowing correct. down. Correct. But these are going to be at a pretty constant all the time. Speed. Okay. That's correct. So. All right. Okay, well, I'll show you a preliminary of what we do here. Uh, I could point out the parts. Okay, this is a, this is the valve units. Okay. The intake valve, instead of having a, a, a rocker arm, is atmospherics. The suction from the from the pressure from the from the piston will literally go like this and open the valve. Oh, so this will have suction on it, right? And then it'll draw this in. Right. Now the bottom thing is the exhaust valve. Okay, now this is a mixer. This thing here is a starting tank. Right. What you would do is put a quart of gas in there. You'd open that needle valve one turn. Yeah. You would start it, let it run for a while. Then you take this hand and this hand and wean it off from gasoline to fuel oil. Because the engine reaction ran on kerosene. So you're closing this valve and opening this one kind of at the same time? Yeah. Okay, well we got that. This is a spark plug. This is an interesting spark plug here. This spark plug is, is a half inch pipe thread. Really? And that saved money on, on manufacturing the spark plug. And oh, I got okay. Hiya folks! Anyways, the uh, spark plug uh, has been been in manufacture since uh, a little after the turn of the century. Yeah. It's a pipe 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 thread plug. In the old spark plugs, you could take them apart to clean the carbon if you follow them. Okay. Two piece plug. So. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do here, I got, I'll go right over here. I got that open at one turn. I'll make sure this is shut. And I'll just take my, 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 my gasoline here and just give it a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a little, a little bit of a, a primer of gas. So I'll just go like that, like that. Just a little gas in Yeah, there? just a little bit. Yeah, because if you put too much gas, it'll flood, and it's very hard to start. So. Okay. There we go. I'll put that back in. And this is something you'd pretty much have to do every time, right? Yeah, no, if it, if it had a, 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 the proper magneto, I, w I wouldn't have to do that. Okay. But being this is a, a, a different a homemade uh, ignition unit, it doesn't have the spark inten intensity at cranking speed oh, compared to running. Now I'll do that. I usually go like this, gotta make sure they're working. I'll make sure this mixture needle is shut. Of course, connect the battery. Yep, it looks um, like the battery's connected. Most engines that have a mag needle does not require a bag, but this one does. Okay, I got it started. Now what I'll do, I'll adjust this mixture until it's smooth. Okay. 
We'll let it run a few minutes. And that gets the engine hot again? Yep, it does. We'll let it run a few moments. Now I'll wean it off of gasoline. It's not still on gasoline, but if it was kerosene, I'd be weaning it from gasoline to kerosene. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do right now. Then I turn on the oiler. Now it's running. Out of the age of the engine, it's running about 200 RPM. Yeah. Now this engine, I use a starting crank. The bag needle has an impulse coupling to ease the aid of starting. Yeah. Now what I do, I hold the intake valve open to get it started so it can roll. Right. And that's that. That was easy. Yes. It's running about 400, it's running about 300 RPM. Yeah. A little faster. Now what I'm going to do here is, steam we're going to get ready to break down, I'm going to put it back on gas and, and empty out the starting tank. Okay. So what I'll do, this is actually shut down for speed. You'll go like this. Okay. Now it's running just on this tank? You're right. And when it stops, because I don't like to use lead gas because the gas is not very good, it'll go bad. Now we'll, we'll run the six sources until it runs out of fuel, and I'll do the carrying down. But that's how you do it. Does this have the same starting tank type as that one does? It does. Yeah, it's a smaller one over here. Yeah, I see it right there. Right there, yeah. And the fuel tank is underneath the engine. 
But my friend and I are going to make a new fuel tank for the six horse. Oh, you need a new fuel tank for this one? This one's fine. The six horse we're going to replace. Oh, that one the there. six horse it was like Swiss cheese. Yeah. But this tank was intact. When I bought it, it had no fuel in it. It was clean. Yeah. So. Now basically what we do with this, shut it off. I shut the mixture valve off, it'll just come to a stop. 